Hey everybody, uh, Saturday morning, Todd Gutner here, weather office. Uh, we've been doing this all week long, giving you updates on, uh, on Hurricane Lee and uh, the impacts on the state. We're finally starting to feel them and see them. Uh, in some places, very impressive. In others, not so much. More bark than bite in parts of the state. Um, first of all, first and foremost, as of 5 a.m. this morning, Lee is no longer tropical. So we don't call it a hurricane any longer. We don't call it a tropical storm any longer. We don't call it a tropical depression any longer. It's just a nor'easter now, a northern latitude storm. It's right here. Still has some strong winds, and that's the important note. However we classify it, semantics, it's a classification thing. The message is still the same. We're going to see wind. We're going to see power outages. Some areas are going to get a lot of rain, and the coastline gets battered. So that message hasn't changed. It's no change to the forecast. Um, at the center, it's still capable of 80-mile-an-hour winds, but you can start to see this comma shape, and fronts are forming. And that's what you'd see in the wintertime when you get these nor'easters. With that said, the wind field is now expanding back to the west along with some of the rain. And that's what you typically see in the winter months with nor'easters or in the fall or spring, you know, with these northern latitude storms. So let's get into it a little bit. Um, we've had a lot of power outages already. Uh, let's see. I put my readers on so I can tell you exactly how much as of this recording. Uh, CMP reporting 30,000 outages in, in, in our area. And then in eastern Maine, Versant has... Uh, a little over, almost 23,000, almost 23,000. So a lot of us, a lot of us are affected by, uh, by the wind and the power. And it's like we've been talking about all week. It's been tough to like say, are we going to have a massive amount of outages or are we going to have a manageable amount of outages? So far, thousands out there still manageable. If they keep ramping up, and they may, because the winds are going to stay strong most of the day, you know, there's going to be a lot. And to quantify that uh, as we were leading up to the storm was always my biggest concern uh, because of the leaves on the trees and the lack of a comparison storm. We don't typically get these nor'easters that last 12 plus hours in the summer months when our trees have all of their leaves still on them. None of them have fallen yet. We're not deep enough into, into the, uh, the cooler months and into fall where we see leaf, leaf droppage. Um, and then also the fact that the, the, the ground is, is wet. So a lot of limbs are breaking right now. There are trees that are snapping and getting uprooted as well. Um, it's definitely more impressive and more severe in down east Maine than it is in southern and western Maine. But with that said, it's happening in southern and western Maine. And we have, as I just told you from CMP, 30,000 outages. Uh, so here's the current wind map, um, current wind gusts. So you can see up there, Bangor's 44. That's a tropical storm force wind gust. Same in Calus right now, 39. That's that low threshold for tropical storm uh, classification for winds, 39 miles per hour. And it goes all the way up to 73. Haven't seen that yet. Don't expect that either. So it's all around 30, 40, 45, maybe 50 miles per hour for our gusts. In Lewiston and Portland and Freiburg, you know, you're getting gusts in the 30s. But we're still getting power outages. So it doesn't take much. That's the, you know, that's the, the, that's what you take away from all this. It really doesn't take much when, when these leaves have, uh, when these trees have leaves on, on, on all of their limbs. So some of the peak gusts that we've had throughout the morning, Eastport did get over 60, and at one point the entire town of Eastport was without power, and they may still be, because it's pretty wild out there right now, and I can't imagine too many bucket trucks are going up in this and, and, and restoring. Uh, Sedgwick, 55 miles per hour. Bar Harbor. 49 miles per hour. Castine uh, at the ma mouth of the Bagadoose River, uh, 49 miles per hour. Cutler, 46. Bangor at the airport has been frequently gusting over 40. 45 miles per hour is the peak gust they've had so far. So I don't expect the wind to really settle below that outage threshold until sundown. So this goes on for another, what, six plus hours or so. So the risk and the chance to get an outage is still several hours long, and this window is still several hours, you know, open, if you will. Um, check out some of the waves out here. I mean, we've seen like 20, 30, yeah, there's a 31 uh, right up here south of Nova Scotia. 
So here's Nova Scotia and Halifax. Right here is Sable Island. You know, that's like this biblical place. Um, I believe it's uninhabited, but that's where, you know, your most powerful blizzards and nor'easters, you know, just, they go, they go to die there, basically. This place is like another world with, uh, with, you know what, Sable Island may not be uninhabited, now that I'm thinking about it. Anyway, I'll have to look that one up. I'm sure some of you out there probably know that answer, and you can, you can, you can let me know somehow through either social media or, or send me an email or something. Uh, anyway, there's some huge waves out there, and they've been propagating into the Gulf of Maine. And check out some of these wave heights off the down east coast. 17 footers from the buoy out there, 12 here, uh, 8, 7, 7. Um, we're coming up on high tide, and all morning long it's been low, so it doesn't look impressive at the beaches right now. Um, I, I just had a friend. Um, send me a text, a video from, uh, from Pine Point in Old Orchard Beach. And it was like, you know, everyone's hunkered down here. And he was being sarcastic because the water was way out. It was low tide. And there was like, you know, it was like a little ripple out there. And there, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't crazy. Um, that's, you know, but again, it was low tide. So as the tide comes up, we're going to have waves that are a lot bigger and they're going to cause beach erosion. Um, the one good thing here is that the tides right now, astronomically speaking, are pretty low and we'll be able to absorb any storm surge, which at last check was not very much. Um, last night before we went into this northwest wind, um, which blows water out to sea, um, we had about a two foot surge. Right now, though, the, the, the wind is out of the north northwest and there's not much of, much of a surge. I'm looking at this is the forecasted, this blue line is the forecasted uh, tide. And as you can see, we're coming up on high tide, which is gonna be just after noon, right before one o'clock this afternoon. And this red line is, is what is actually happening. That's, that's live um, data from the buoy. And this red line and this blue line, the difference between the two is the surge. So at one point it was about two feet. As we're getting closer and closer to high tide, and that wind is getting stronger and stronger and blowing water out because it's an offshore wind, that, that gap is closing. So I'm not too concerned about uh, coastal inundation. There, there's, going to be, um, there's going to be like spray and splash over from the big waves as they, they crash on the beach, but there isn't gonna be like water inundating the roads and getting in people's property and then you know, getting into basements and closing off sections of towns and things like that. So as far as coastal flooding goes, this storm pales in comparison to a billion other storms that we've had here in New England, whether it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. So we can get that, we can, we can just erase that from the table and the thought of anything major going on along the coast. So that's great. Um, lastly, the rain. Um, here's, the, here's the latest radar. And again, you know, we're like halfway through the morning. Um, there's the latest radar. There's really not a lot of rain out there. Outside of Down East Maine, from Bangor to, to the Canadian border, you know, this is like scattered shower stuff, all pretty light too. There's a ton of dry air, a ton of it. I almost swore right there. <laughs> I was almost so casual that I swore right there. I almost put a four letter word in there by accident. I didn't, I didn't do it. I have my filter still somehow, even though I haven't slept much in the last four or five days. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of dry air out here, and it's just chewing up all of this rain as it, uh, these bands work from the east to west. With that said, um, there's, there's a lot of rain on the down east coast right now. Let's close in, and you can just see it just migrating back to the west. This just came through Washington County, and it was a little wild there for a while. Uh, we've got a couple of, re of recorders um, out there. Uh, Donovan Lynch is in, uh, in Cutler and, um, and, uh, and also out uh, near Quaddy Head right now. He's been patrolling that area. And I, and I just saw um, a feed from him, video from him, and, and he was getting rocked pretty good. And then uh, Dana Osgood, she's, um, she's our rookie meteorologist. She just came on board over the summer. Uh, she's been in Bar Harbor, and, um, and she's been having a blast, as you know, the youngins do. They get all jazzed up for stuff like this. And, um, and she's just getting drenched. And Chloe pointed it out, Chloe Tebow, uh, who I'm anchoring with this morning, pointed out that she doesn't have a hair tie. And Chloe's like, I wish I could give her a hair tie because her hair's blowing all over the place every time her hood flies off in a gust of wind. So, 
You know, it's pretty crazy out here. It looks crazy. It is crazy out here. But to the south, in the Portland area, it's not. It doesn't look that bad. You know, but we still have those, you know, tens of thousands of outages. So hopefully you're not affected by them. If you are, hopefully it gets restored in a relatively fast manner. Um, so that's about all I can say to you. Um, the wind is going to stay pretty strong and capable of producing an outage until dark, until sundown. And then it's going to ramp down. Tomorrow's going to be so much better. We're going to have sunshine. We're going to have a really nice day, 75 to 80 degrees. So that's the day to get outside, although there's lots of football going on. So I'll probably be watching most of that. Um, we'll provide more updates for you throughout the day. Um, so keep checking back, and uh, I'll catch you, catch you later on. See you.